Hey guys, what's up? Pitmarth Roy here, and welcome back to Let's Play a Pokemon Coliseum. In the last episode, we went to the Under and uh, met the Kid Network, helped them get their uh, computer software back up and uh, running again, and watched Sylvia also get captured because, you know, he's an idiot. So, uh, in this episode, we are going to be heading into our next boss battle here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit about this so you guys can get your team set up. Hopefully you've got some uh, gender differences here and they're not all male or all female. Because if you remember correctly, Mirror Beast's uh, little trick was he had Rain Dance and Leech Seed. And the last one we had Dakim, he used the Earthquake Protect combo, which he didn't, but typically he would. With Venus, she will use Attract, and she will make you really mad, trust me. Uh, she has a Delcaddy, I'm going to warn you right now, don't attack that with physical attacks or you will automatically get attracted, assuming you're a male. So if you got you know half and half or even two and four, that works really well. If you've only got you know one female or only one male, this can be a very difficult fight. And if you have all of one gender, you're really gonna suffer in this fight. I promise you that. So her team is gonna be Delcaddy, Vileplume, Bayonet, Steelix, and Suicune. So the reason I'm keeping AR in here is for this against the Steelix and the Vileplume. They're both gonna be weak to it. And as for why I have Mytho out here, that's mainly just because Mytho's female. So you know, don't worry about the attract as much. And I'm going to do my best to take them all out as quickly as I can here, because they will mess you up, so... Uh, she will use a lot of stuff, so just be prepared for the attract, because it will get really irritating. Testing, testing. The rain in the under is accompanied by thunder. What? What? Alright, whatever. You're holding up the film shoot. We're about to begin filming. Wait, who are you? We're the trespassers. I recognize those faces. They're on the blacklist from headquarters. How'd you find us? But never mind. That's not important. I'll squash it myself and collect a reward from Master Nescauer. Alright. What are you gonna throw at us? Delcaddy and Bayonet. Okay, good. Gonna have to watch that Delcaddy. I'm gonna take that thing out as quickly as I possibly can. I'm not sure if her male Pokemon do use attract. I know her female ones do. I'm not sure on the other ones. Now, the thing with Attract is, if you take out the Pokemon that used Attract on them, so like if Delcaddy made Typhlosion Attract it, and then I got rid of Delcaddy, the Attract would wear off. So I'm going to try to just nail this thing as hard as I can, all in one hit. I know Flame, Flame Wheel's a physical attack, and I said not do that, but I'm just going to try to nail it as hard as I can, and get rid of the De Delcaddy as soon as I possibly can. Because that Delcaddy is dangerous. And that double edge attack is very dangerous. It does have recoil damage on it, but it can do quite a massive amount of damage. I'm just going to try to smash it as quickly as I can and just get it out of there. I don't remember what the Bayonet has, in all honesty. I think it's, uh... You know, I mean, I know it's weak to dark attacks, but I'm not sure what its moveset is. It's Steelix, that's good. I was hoping uh, it would be, uh... Her Legendary coming up next. If I can keep AR alive, then, uh... It be that big of a deal, trying to get rid of Steelix, and it does have a track to create. Let's see if I can uh, hit it anyway. Oh, for a big guy, Steelix doesn't take too kindly to fire. Shadow Ball, I'm gonna assume that's against. Yep. Oh, come on, a critical. Fine. Right, we got two males out on the screen right now, so I'm gonna, not gonna throw out BT for this. Like I said, he's weak to dark, so I'll send up Brown out. Earthquake. Yeah, the good thing is, fortunately, even though Steelix does have Earthquake, I know it's gonna, like, you know, hurt your Pokemon really bad. Obviously, it just did. But, uh, he doesn't use the Protect with it, so he can hurt his own team, and he will hurt his own team. For example... So, that is a slight advantage you have in this one. Uh... Sire, I guess. This one's just so much of a damage race, I hate it. And that should get rid of Bayonet. Yep. That's gonna be Vile Plume, yeah. As a whole, bosses will generally only have their Shadow Pokemon come out at the very end, so... 
I was expecting that. Steelix is gone, so now we can expect to see it. And the problem now is we have Vile Plume, because Quaxar is going to be 4x weak to that grass attack, and I'm pretty sure it's got Giga Drain. I think it has Giga Drain, Attract, Stunt Spore, and something else. I don't remember what. But there's that Suicune, of course. I'm gonna give some a shot here and see if I can get it to work. I'm not sure what Squeaker has. I think it's got Ice Beam. I know it's got Shadow Rush, obviously. I think it has Ice Beam, a Water Attack, and something else. Probably a Track, no, with my luck. Alright, good. That's exactly what I wanted to see. In case you couldn't uh, tell, I'm trying to mobilize this vial plume until I can find out a really good way to get rid of it. This weekend's a water type, so I can't really drag out AR even if he was alive. The best way to take care of it would be to switch it out for lightning. I guess start working against vial plume right now. If I have a revive, I'm going to bring Mytho back and uh, paralyze Suicune. If not, then I guess I'll probably ha either resort to Secret Power by Surefire or to Yawn from Elliot, just depending on where I am at that point. It should fall asleep at the end of this turn, so hopefully it'll just hurt itself. Nope. And I'm going to assume that would be on where Elliot was standing. Yes. Jerk. I hate those things. Alright, let's see if I can smash it with Psybeam. No, not him. Smash it with Psybeam, and in the meantime... Make sure that it doesn't get me. Lethal damage taken to it by Suicune. I'm pretty sure it'll go first, but, you know, I'd rather... Since Espeon's one of the three strong ones on my team, physically, gotta make sure that it's alright. I was expecting that. Yeah, you're still asleep. Good. You should still be asleep. Be swift and also Secret Power and File Plume, and hopefully that will work. That did not hardly do anything. Alright, Vibling is taken care of, so that just leaves Suicune now. It's amazing how close you catch these two legendary dogs back to back, you know, with Tay and then Suicune. They're only two videos apart, really, it's a pretty short gap. If I remember correctly, Raikou's uh, a lot later. Not terribly a lot later, but, you know. So, uh... Do I have a revive out of curiosity? I do have a revive. This is going to be a lot better off bringing back than AR would. I don't think that's going to save Lightning from a... Uh, Shadow Rush, but it'll help later on, probably. If it does, then awesome. Yeah, 13 health, it very well might have. I do not think Return will kill it, so... Uh... Five to thirteen, that's about sixty health. Yeah. Oh yeah, that definitely didn't kill it. Wow, this thing's got a, either a lot of defense, a lot of health, or both. Yeah, it does have a water attack, there's surf. Right, that actually as much as I didn't want to see lightning die, that work came at a very good time, so now I can drag out Ampharos. Brown's got way too much defense for it to get killed by that. Thunder 
another wave. Bite, I guess. See if I can, uh... Now it's going first. Wow. And after this, I'm gonna have to start using Cotton Spore. Lower its speed, so it's not always going first. Of course, the Thunder Wave may para will paralyze it, so maybe that'll be enough to, uh... prevent it from going first. Or go ahead and bite it again. I don't think it's going to be enough to kill it. It's got a lot more defense than I remember. I don't remember it being particularly difficult to catch, but I don't remember having this much health and defense either. I should not be going first from now on. I'd like to be able to use Swift from either... Uh, Espeon or Typhlosion, but they're unfortunately both knocked out right now, so I can't do that. I don't want to do the same thing again. In fact, let's just go ahead and try right now, I guess. Great Ball's probably a terrible idea for this, by the way, so I'm not recommending what I'm about to do. There's no way in the world I'm going to try for a Confuse Ray. That's a really bad idea. I usually only use Confuse Ray if, uh, if it's not a Shadow Pokemon and I can't really do a lot of damage to it. But yeah, trying to use a Confused status on a Shadow Pokemon to catch it, that's not a smart idea. Because then it's just going to have a very likely chance to hurt itself in the Confusion. And that happens a lot, especially later on. So yeah, don't ever Confuse it. Always paralyze it or put it to sleep. Either one works, but definitely don't Confuse it. That's not safe. we at now? We have Swablu and send out Quagsire since it's also a water type. It won't be hurt that much by Surf. Flutter, yeah, I figured it was going to at some point. Time to score again, and now I'm pretty much just going to start throwing Ultra Balls until I catch it. That's about the health I want to be. If it hurts itself a little bit more with Shadow Rush, that's alright. It's paralyzed and it's in the red, so you can't ask for much more than that. So now it's just a matter of patience, really. I know some people are probably going to be annoyed from the fact that it, you know, I don't speed up the uh, boss battles and we're at like, you know, 13 minutes right now. And like I said, normally I do speed up the battles, especially if there's a lot in a row, but sometimes I don't speed them up like if they're just kind of out by themselves and if they're boss battles I just don't speed them up at all because you know the boss battles are you know kind of the important ones of the bunch so yeah I, I will probably never speed up a boss battle later on down the track whenever we're getting to the next part with the uh, staircase then yeah I'll speed those up for sure alright good got Suicune very nice I'm so glad that didn't go out live on the air, really. It's not, you know, no, you got my legendary shadow Pokemon, or whatever. Lady Venus was knocked down. You mean knocked out? Run away! Remember this, I'll get you back for the... What? Thank you, Bowser, for Mario Party 2? Good gosh. An iron file. F sort of like a... What would F be? Final report? Ah! There's several ways to carve in the ordinary uh, yeah. purification versus fans shut up over it's smooth nor some laser Pokemon is all XP, perhaps you don't have to love. Maybe possibly create more shadow Pokemon, yeah. Okay, so that was the final report, so I guess we'll be seeing more of those. You can find a TM forty five, which I don't know what team that is. Let's have a quick look at that. Uh, it's a tract. Go figure. Why does that not surprise me? Anyway, we can head down here. Uh, don't worry about healing. Don't don't bother. We're gonna be actually taken to a spot we saw earlier she's gonna run off uh, we're gonna ignore that momentarily it's locked from the side unlock the door sure and you should be able to go in and out of this from now on so don't worry about that you can talk to this guy if you want what is Lady Venus gonna give me shit yeah that was the winner of one of the Coliseums and now he's just kinda waiting unless there's something right here I'm not gonna okay yeah. I'm gonna head up these stairs real quick and you'll notice 
they were actually back in the Coliseum area, so that's why I said don't waste your time healing with items. You can just, you know, heal right here. Alright, let's go ahead and save again. Now that that's taken care of, we have a little bit of speeding up in a second since we gotta go down that freaking, uh, got quite a bit of these battles coming. I think there's like four in total. But yeah, okay. So if you head this way through the, uh, intersection Lady Venus went to, you'll notice that she actually takes the elevator down and then prevents you from using it. And you can see all the trainers as we go down. There's one, there's one, there's one. And there's one at the very end right here, which I don't it may or may not show up on screen. Uh, it doesn't look like it. So we can't actually go that way. we got to go through the other door that was there a second ago. So now comes the point, like I said, that we're going to be doing boss battles. Or not boss battles, what? We're going to be doing a lot of battles in a row. Now is when I'm going to speed up, so I will see you guys momentarily. Alright, so now that we are actually back in the post commentary, jeez, it's been a while since I put something up, which is why it's a little bit late, so I apologize. You'll notice I actually did show the whole battles this time, sped them up, and I think for the most part, time-wise, we're pretty much okay, I don't know. It's, it's summer anyway, might as well make them somewhat long. So anyway, the first one we have here is a Shadow Gligar, which is kind of awkward to fight for two reasons. One, it's a ground flying. Yeah, I don't know. And secondly, because it's a ground, uh, paralysis will not work on it. The reason that I had Ampharos out was for something else. I don't think it was, but it wasn't for paralysis. Paralysis won't work on it. Uh, it's actually the reason that I kept Yawn on, uh, on Quagsire is because even though it can't be paralyzed because it's an electric type move, it can be put to sleep, and I ended up doing that later on here. And I also used, uh, the, uh, used smoke screen quite a bit to, uh, use smoke screen quite a bit to uh, lower its accuracy. Not only so it would damage itself from Shadow Rush as much, because it might miss, but also just because, you know, it won't hurt my team as much. Granted, I'd go back to heal after all these fights, but either way, you know. I think what I did right there was I just uh, sent out Espeon previously, just to uh, use uh, Reflect to raise defense a little bit. Not entirely sure why Gligar's decent in offense, and his defense, if it's any indication here, what I'm watching is, eh not great. As a Pokemon to use, eh, leaves a lot to be desired. You can probably find a better ground type and a better flying type, but flying ground's just kind of bizarre. Not really a gigantic fan of Gligar. It looks pretty cool, but stat-wise, eh. But yeah, Yon will put it to sleep on the next turn, and it's got a very good accuracy, so since you can't use Paralysis, sleep is going to be your next best bet. If you use anything like Poison or Burn or anything like that, then it's going to gradually uh, lower its HP and you might accidentally kill it. And then she asks uh, if you will make her cry, and either way she cries, so it doesn't really matter what you answer there. Next one we got is Leex. Not sure how you pronounce that. She actually didn't start with her Shadow Pokemon. She's got a Curly on Roselia. You can see I switched up my teams because I knew it was coming up, so I kept Typhlosion in there because the Roselia, and then obviously I switched out for Umbreon as well. She also has a Gloom, which is not on her shadow either, thank goodness, because I'm not really a big fan of Gloom. If I recall, her shadow Pokemon is a Stantler, which is a normal type. I'm just trying to remember here, I'm not entirely sure. No, it is Stantler, alright. Now for some reason, like, whenever I try to get this guy, it's always 50-50. Either I get him pretty easily, or it takes forever for me to catch him for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but sometimes it just seems like he's an absolute pain to try to get rid of, and I'm not sure why. It's really odd. Unfortunately, this time, he was actually not that much of a pain to catch. He's a normal type, so obviously, don't use fighting moves against him, because that'll be uh, super effective, and you might accidentally kill him. Uh, if I were, like, what was funny is, when I was fighting this guy, I was like, alright, I think his defense is pretty high, because I remember his defense being kind of annoying the last time I tried to catch him, but... His defense was just kind of, it wasn't bad, but it was average, I guess. He likes to use takedown a lot, in addition to Shadow Rush, and so, uh, you can expect to see him doing a lot of recoil damage to himself if he gets to attack, which is why I'm using, uh, Smokescreen and also, uh, Paralysis moves. 
I just kind of stuck to Thundershock because it was a fairly weak attack and it was doing consistent amounts of damage, and so I just said, alright, we're going to go for it. And then I got him down to that health, and, you know, pretty much from there, you just start throwing Ultra Balls till you catch it. I'm pretty sure it took a couple of... No, I got him right here. Alright, cool. But yeah, it, it wasn't that hard for me to get him that time. What's with this ridiculous power? So much power! You can also go behind here in this little alcove area, which I'm not sure why it's here, but they give you a couple of timer balls and also uh, max potions. Max potions are obviously going to fully restore your Pokemon's health, provided they're not fainted. The timer balls are a type of Pokeball that will get stronger as the uh, the uh, fight goes on, so as more turns progress, the uh, better the catch rate is on it. I'm not a big fan of the timer balls, but you know, if you want to give them a shot, you know, if you've been sitting there for a while just chipping away at its HP, it might be worth a shot. As you can see here, she has a Dunsparce and an Octillery and a Masquerade, none of which uh, are her Shadow, which is funny because we, sh we saw Shadow Dunsparce earlier in the game, but uh, it's not the case now. Uh, the problem with this fight, if I recall, is the Masquerade likes to use Stun Spore quite a bit, and thanks to Headbutt, you can get paral uh, paralyzed as well, and it can also inflict flinching, I think. So this is just kind of an annoying fight to try to get rid of both, because you get you know, flinching or paralysis quite a bit here. If you can take them out, then it's not as much of a problem. So her shadow Pokemon is a Pillow Swine, which is an Ice Ground, if I recall, so... I think it's Ice Ground. Now, this was probably the most annoying one to catch of all of them, in all honesty. Well, maybe the next one was worse, but this one was annoying just because it kept using Dig over and over and over. And whenever you... Like, you can't catch it with a Pokeball, I don't think, whenever it's using Dig underground, but it also means that your attacks are going to miss. And the reason I switched out right there is because I knew if it had hit either one of those guys, whether it had been uh, Mytho or AR, it was just going to be a super effective hit, so it would have been really bad for him. So I, that's why I swapped out. I switched to uh, Umbreon because of high defense, and I switched to uh, Quagsire, I think, yeah, to use Yawn and maybe Surf. I was kind of debating on Surf and how much damage it would do. But yeah, this one was just a pain to try to catch, and it didn't help that since I did have uh, Quagsire out there, I was like, well, is it going to, you know, use the Quick Claw and go first? Is it not going to? And unfortunately, on the first turn, it didn't, and on the second turn, it did. It was just kind of annoying. But eventually, I put it to sleep, and after it uh, fell asleep, then it was pretty easy from there. I also used Bite to try to make it flinch, which I believe worked, yeah. And after I did that, it was pretty easy, but if you can get him to stop using Dig over and over, then it's you can get through without too much damage. That's pretty much all for this one. I mean, I can't say more. I lowered its speed with Mudshot, which really wasn't the intention. The intention was the damage, but I guess lowering its speed would also help if you're really having trouble getting it. And alright, good, I got it there. I had pretty luck with catching these guys. Usually it takes a lot more tries with the Pokeballs, but... And there's some Ultra Balls down there in the corner, so be sure to pick those up. You know, restock, because you probably lost quite a bit of them. And lastly, we have the One More Rider, and she's got one of the more annoying ones to try to catch, which is a Shadow Sneasel, which is a Dark and Ice. The main problem with this thing is it is one fast Pokemon, man. You will not be going first unless you lower their speed. It is fast, and it's also got really high offense. So it can damage your team pretty quickly, in all honesty. You want to be careful against fighting this thing. But since it's a Dark Ice, it would be weak to a fire. Which is why I was kind of avoiding attacking it at the start, because I was like, well, I need to get out louder and survive burn and all that. And I was just going to be like, alright, paralyze it. That'll lower its speed, but it was still pretty fast. If I recall, it still went. Well, no, I guess it did go third. So paralyzing it helped. I used Cotsport to really lower its speed, but... Yeah, if you let it stay out for too long, it will just wreck your team terribly. And I knew by using that paralysis I was going to lose Ampharos. That was not a surprise at all. But you can see it. It does a pretty good amount of damage just from, you know, normal attacks, really. It's fast and it's got high offense, and that makes it a threat. I wouldn't recommend it because its defense is kind of low. And overall, it's definitely not fantastic. It's one of the cooler ones looking-wise that's, like, one of my top ten for looks. And it's it's good against fighting it, but I guarantee you, 
if like if everyone was level 43 the same level as the Sneasel, it probably wouldn't be as much of a threat other than its speed. Because everyone would have a little bit more defense, so it just wouldn't be as bad. It does have a keen eye, I did notice that, so you can't make it lose uh, accuracy by smokescreen or any other means. So uh, make sure you don't do that. I'm not sure if that's interchangeable with another effect it can have. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but yeah, using smokescreen on it's not going to work. And apparently Typhlosion got confused somewhere in there, I kind of missed it, I guess there was a confused way from Corsola or Sneasel. Sneasel typically sticks to physical attacks whenever you fight it here, so... Yeah, I wasn't paying attention the first time, so I was like, oh, maybe I could try smokescreen again, but no, I'm an idiot. It also has Screech, which will lower your defense sharply, which does not help its good attack stat against you at this point in the game. I don't think I caught this on the first try, maybe I did? No, I didn't. Okay, good. I was kind of glad that I didn't, because that would have been really bizarre. I think at this point I was just kind of waiting for it to, like, weaken itself enough to where I could try to catch it. But it was, it just wrecked my team. Like, it's, whenever you fight this guy and you're under level, it's, well, not this guy, but this trainer. It's just really annoying for some reason. But either way, that is it for that, uh, and all the battles on the staircase, so I will see you guys in a sec. Alright, now that we have taken care of all those guys, let's go ahead and head in here. Why do you have to chase me here? It's so unfair. Can't lead them to the lab. But you're gonna do it anyway, aren't you? Ooh, what's up here? I think there's things. I like things. What is this? Black glasses. Apparently we're out of room because those got sent to the PC, but black glasses will raise your... Uh, if your Pokemon has a dark type move, it will raise the uh, power of their dark type moves. So that would be good for Umbreon. And yeah, make sure to check around this little train area because I know in both stations there are objects you can collect. So be sure you do that. He is missing. This can't be operated. Well, yeah, I can't operate it either. The key for the shadow liner is right here. You didn't think I'd really let you take our train. Oh no, they got us. And that was the only key to the train. How are we ever gonna... Oh, it's right here. Pfft, morons. So now we have the key, we can actually operate this. Subway key, use. Now this isn't actually going to take us to the Shadow Pokemon. Well, let's say yes and no. We'll, we'll see in a second here. No, not there. Go here, you silly. be anything else back this way. Yeah, you can see that item right there. We'll get it in a second here. Is she really just gonna... Alright, Jay. You can you can do that the whole time. Uh, that's not normal. Yo, how's it going? Just getting off shift, huh? Lady, what's Lady Venus supposed to be coming today? I sent your face somewhere. That's it, the blacklist. How'd you get down here? This will do. We can't let these two get in the Shadow Pokemon Lab. And so instead, what they do... Yeah, we're going to investigate that in a second first when we get this item. And that would be the U-Disc. And the U-Disc is very important to pick up because, uh, in case you didn't catch it from whenever I said it last time, the U-Disc actually enables the UFO to go upward, and there's a time flute there. So, yeah, definitely go pick that up. Take that and weep. You'll never be able to chase us now. It's not like you could, you know, use your Pokemon to fly across the gap. Don't you think I was overdoing things a little? Eh, it's, it's too late now. <laughs> you morons. But there's an item over here, so let's go and pick it up, and it is the main gate key. So even though we can't go into the Shadow Pokemon Lab from this spot, we have the main gate key, and we can go to the over map and get it there. 
So when I say we can head to the Shadow Pokemon Lab, the answer is yes and no. You can't from here, but you can pick up the item that will enable you to do that. So we're going to use this and go back. Now I'm not going to... I'll probably just meet you guys next episode at the uh, main gate, or on the over map, to, you know, heading into the Shadow Pokemon Lab area. I'm also hopefully going to get some, uh, not really healing items, but maybe some healing items, and definitely some, uh, some full heals, so I don't have to worry about status effects. The next area isn't, like, crawling with them, but I'm running out, so it's kind of important that I get a couple of those. So I'd highly recommend, since the uh, Shadow Pokemon Lab does have uh, quite a bit of, you know, sustenance to it, go ahead and pick up all the items that you think you might need, and go ahead and go for it. I'm going to pick up those black glasses as well, and put them on Umbreon if uh, Umbreon doesn't have any item equipped to it, so... Yeah, fortunately, you can take the elevator from now on, so you don't have to go around the whole thing. But I think that is our plan for the rest of this. I don't really think I have anything else for this video, for the most part. I mean, the next area is going to be uh, the Shadow Pokemon Lab, so let's go ahead and heal and save one more time. But yeah, either way, we've gotten uh, quite a bit done thus far. We have caught the next uh, Shadow Legendary Pokemon Suicune from Lady Venus. We caught some of those other Pokemon. Uh, you know, the Stantler, the... Uh, what else did we catch besides Stantler? I know we got the Sneasel. What else was there? Oh, the Gligar and the Pillis one. That's right. Notice that they do have some items, so if you want to pick those up from them, go ahead. Uh, what I'm going to do now... Deposit... There's got to be some items I don't need right here on my uh, regular item list. You know, I'll deal with my items uh, off screen, but uh, since I've already saved... Oh, well, have I saved? Hi, Crumba. Either way, I will see you guys next time for the next episode of Let's Play Pokemon Coliseum when we tackle the Shadow Pokemon Lab. Take care, y'all.